Welcome back to Seek the Truth. I'm George Butler. Along with Charlotte Littlefield Brown. How are you, Charlotte? Good, George. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. We're going to move on. We've done some testing tonight. Uh, uh, we started a regime of testing uh, for Margallans, and uh, we, we we don't know. Uh, we're not we're not saying that our, our next guest uh, is uh, you know certifying this or anything or connected with this at all. We want to make sure that uh, he has no connection with our testing that's going on tonight. But anyway, uh, we want to bring on. Uh, Dr. Randy Weimar, welcome to our program, Dr. Weimar. Thank you very much, George. Okay, you're head of a research center at what, Oklahoma State University? Yes, it's the Center for the Investigation of Morgellons Disease, which is at the Oklahoma State University Center for Health Sciences. Okay, what, uh, I know that uh, we've been in some conversations by email. Could you sort of give us a, an update on what some of your latest findings are uh, on this? Uh, you're calling it a disease, or is this sort of a condition? Which one would that be? Well, I don't know if it's a disease or a syndrome, and the small definition sort of distinction there is, is it one single cause, or is it, more than one cause that just happens to have the exact same symptoms. Now, personally, I would say it's a disease because of the presence of fibers and other unusual shed material, the neurological effects. It's, it's kind of hard to envision multiple different causes leading to that same sort of um, uh, symptom set. I see. You're, you've done some analysis of some of these fibers, and what are you all coming up with on that? Well, unfortunately, so far, the ones that we have had replicated where we can say definitively, uh, we, we don't know for sure what they are made of. I mean, we have some of the individual pieces, but we haven't been able to um, finish up the analysis yet to give us sort of a, well, what is it exactly? So, for instance, it it has carbons, hydrogens, nitrogens, oxygens. Uh, that part's unquestionable. So, in other words, it is an organic compound from a chemical perspective. But how the various carbons, nitrogens, oxygens, and so forth are put together to come up with an actual formula, that's what we're – basically, that's, that's the research that's in progress at the moment. I see. Uh, you're saying also about the color, the red and blue colors of some of these fibers, uh, there, there, there are no dyes there involved or pigmentation. Is that what you're saying? Oh, absolutely. The uh, Tulsa Police Department Forensics Lab did the uh, initial fiber analysis for us. And basically, if you take a piece of cotton or nylon or a- any colored fuzz that might be in a dust bunny underneath somebody's couch, uh, it's very easy to extract the colors. Now, those colors might be a pigment, they might be a dye, they might be a naturally occurring color, but one way or another, with the appropriate solvent or detergent, you can extract those colors and then do spectroscopy on them. And basically, they used all of the, the normal detergents and solvents that they would use and even reached for some of the compounds and um, solvents and detergents they've never had to even use before and no matter what they did, the colors do, are not extractable from the fibers themselves. Well, that's quite interesting. Is this still you're considered to be a mystery from your viewpoint about where where this uh, what these things are? How about the sourcing? Where is the source of this uh, these fibers? Do you think? Yeah, unfortunately, at that point, I have absolutely no clue. Now, as far as is it a mystery? Absolutely. I mean. You know, probably a lot of people have watched CSI or one of these crime shows where, you know, they do spectroscopy or other testing on them. And while the specifics that they do on these TV shows is sometimes a real stretch from reality, the bottom line is when we take samples that are not Morgellons fibers, the uh, forensics chemists have absolutely no problem telling what they are uh, you know, extracting the pigments. So, for instance, we had someone who presented what they claimed was a Morgellons fiber, but the um, the pediatrician who's working with me, Dr. Rhonda Casey, she's a, a associate professor of pediatric medicine at the medical school. You know, we looked at the at the fibers and thought those don't look like Morgellons fibers, but nonetheless, we took them to the police department, 
And they had seen enough legitimate Morgellons fibers that they even thought, yeah, these don't quite look normal. Well, when they did the spectroscopy, it came up with a, uh, a 95 or so percent match with a particular DuPont nylon. So as far as the analysis goes, if it's a known, detecting it as a known and coming up with what the composition is is not a problem. But the Morgellons fibers, whether they're red or blue, doesn't really matter. They don't match anything in the databases that the forensic labs use. Would, you, would this indicate a possible origin of, of using nanotechnology on some level of creating these types of fibers or not? Well, I mean, to say specifically nanotechnology would be, you know, a particular hypothesis that would have to be testable. At this point, we have nothing that really indicates that because, you know, for instance, uh, your typical, um, oh, like the carbon nanotubes, that would be recognizable with the, the spectroscopy, no problem. Um, right. What we can say about the fibers, it, first of all, the red and blue fibers are not identical to one another from a spectroscopic standpoint. They are similar enough that you can tell they are related to one another chemically, but they have a few different peaks that suggest some differences between them. Also, the peaks are very sharp. Now, I am not a spectroscopist, but those people who are spectroscopy experts have looked at the uh, fingerprints, as you, if you will, of these samples and you know, their conclusion is that whatever they are, they're a fairly pure substance. That is to say, there's not a lot of contaminating other material along with it because the peaks are very sharp. Okay. When you say peaks, is that uh, along the, a certain uh, color um, spectrum? Yeah, a certain wavelength. See, you know, so I, with you're the, saying it, at a certain frequency, it has a much higher peak than normally you would expect. Is that right? Well, it's not that it's a higher peak. It's just that it has a unique peak. So unique as you're peak. moving along the frequency, so this is uh, what's, what's called FTIR spectroscopy. So yes. as you're moving along the, uh, the the various wavelengths, you know, from from low to high through this uh, infrared spectroscopic range, the peaks, some of the peaks line up with, for instance, methyl groups or, or uh, carbon oxygen double uh, bond. Uh, sorry, carbon oxygen or carbon carbon double bonds. But then there are some peaks at an unusual wavelengths that it's not clear exactly what these would be. Right. And so that's why it doesn't match anything that's uh, in the database, not just of fibers, but of, of just sort of a broad organic compound database. Um, the, so, using yeah, a different Charlotte's got a, got a question method. for you, Doctor. What I'm would sorry, you, what? Yes, yeah, Charlotte's got a question for you here. Okay. Oh, but you know what? We got that break on time. And when we come back, I'd like to, to uh, if you're saying it's not in the organic database uh, and you guys uh, can't match it to anything that's already in the database as far as existing compounds, uh, I wonder, my question is, uh, how can you call it organic? So perhaps you can answer that when we come back. We'll, we'll come right back, Doctor. Thank you for being with us this evening. Welcome back to The Secret Truth. I'm George Butler along with Charlotte Littlefield. Welcome back, Dr. Randy Weimer. Thank you. Oh, I'll tell you what. Uh, we've got a, an in-studio uh, question for you here. Uh, Bob has a question for you about some anal uh, analysis of some of these uh, organic possible uh, compounds. What, what is your question, Bob? Um, what I was just going to ask, Doctor, is uh, at what infrared frequency did you find peaks that indicated that it was hydrocarbons? Did you find um, something that indicated there was a carbon to oxygen bond or uh, what specifically? 